Hello and welcome to Let's Ride with Stonewolf. I'm just leaving Inverness. <clears throat> Had a bit of a scare there. I came around a roundabout and it's like road closed the way I was gonna go. I was like, what? So like I followed the alternative route, it was just like go 200 meters this way and take an alternative bridge and was like Oh okay. <clears throat> We, uh, we're on our way back home, um, back to Nottingham, uh, this is the road to Fort William, past um, Loch Ness, <coughs> we left basically on time, I think it was like 4 minutes after the hour, for me that's like incredibly good. Um, it's a little chilly actually. I mean, it's not cold, cold, but like, you know. <clears throat> I think it'll warm up. Um, everything is dry, which is nice. I think my wallet's still wet. But that's because I haven't really made an effort to dry it out. <clears throat> I made a big effort to get my kit dry. Uh, I think all of my uh, tank bag stuff is dry. Some stuff didn't make it, uh, my notebook didn't make it, the little box that I keep my screen wipe and microfiber cloth in didn't make it. <laughs> but, um, generally speaking, we're all nice and ready to go. Um, wow, yeah, like the, the NC500 run, the one day, it was something else. Uh, I hope you've been following along. Um, when last we talked, uh, if you're not watching like vlogs and stuff, um, I was in Loch Caron and things were looking dicey but uh, <laughs> optimistic. <coughs> but the sun was going down. Um, so I couldn't really continue doing footage and um, I had not got a charge in Torridon. I had 26% of my battery. It was 20 miles to get to Akashin. Uh, then if Akashin was out, all hope was lost. Well, guess what? Uh, Akashin was out. Um, I had quite the moment. Um, <laughs> up there uh, and I left that machine at a crawl at like cruise control 18 miles an hour it was the slowest that it would go it's about 16 17 um, real speed um, and uh, yeah uh, I uh, crawled down, all the way down to Inverness. Uh, it was... I was sure I was going to fail. It was dark. A little chilly. I was all on my own. Crawling along the side of the road. I felt really vulnerable. Uh, I was just, I kept looking at the numbers, I was like, it's, I'm gonna fail. I'm gonna end up seven miles short of Inverness. That's what the numbers were telling me. <coughs> and, um, yeah, Inverness is at sea level, and I was up in the mountains, and somehow everything was uphill, and there was never a big downhill. You, know, you go up and up and up and up, and you expect that there's going to be a big down, and it never came. Um, and a little bit after my reward, I, uh, I hit zero, and the bike went into limp mode. And it basically, um, it does this thing where you have like whatever reserve capacity you have, the battery has an overhead that uh, it's just there for like battery health purposes and that kind of thing and <clears throat> yeah like when
when it gets to that point, I can't tell you how far you're gonna get. It doesn't know how much you've got, so it can't tell you how much you've got. Um, like part of the reason that overhead exists is just for cell balancing. Um, and um, yeah, I got a couple of miles into it. It was like every hill. This is it. This is the end. Every humpback bridge over a railway. That's it. For, that's all, folks. You know, and um, and it just kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going, and the last town before Inverness, there's a little hill. Like you go up into the little town, and then you can out again the other side. And it was like that's it, that's me done. But it kept going. My camera had stopped recording at this point, which is a shame because the light had started coming up again. I just hadn't, I was too far too focused to pay attention to, like, recording and stuff. And, um, I really wish, this is Loch Ness, by the way. I really wish I had, because, um, oh, just the view coming into Inverness. Like, the big sky over on the horizon, the bridge, um, the suspension bridge, uh, silhouetted in the distance, the bay was just completely calm, like mirror water reflecting everything, <clears throat> and I was rolling along slowly past it. It was pretty surreal, to be honest. And I made it. The bike got me there. About 11 or 12 miles past zero. On something like minus 5%. I made it to the castle at exactly 3 a.m. Exactly 22 hours after I set out. So we did it! We did the one day NC500. Ah, it was such a good feeling, I have to say. Oh. It was such a good feeling. Um, I was absolutely shattered. I literally physically cried. Um, I had to go charge the bike because I couldn't park it on that. I, I thought that parking it on that would be extremely unwise. <laughs> So I had to put in like half an hour of AC charging and then like a quick DC charge. Um, oh wow, it was quite the experience. And then yesterday was a layover day, which I very, 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 very much needed. Um, and I am... I am not ready to be going on another long ride, I gotta tell ya. But my schedule is what my schedule is, so here we are. Um, I'm a little tired, I have to say. Um, but I am feeling very positive. Ah. This is the A85, this basically goes along Loch Ness and Fort Augustus, and then it swaps sides and goes along whatever the other lock on the other side is, <coughs> all the way down to Fort William. Um, and at Fort William, basically, we are going to charge and then we're going to go along the bay, because it's a bay on the other side of Fort William also called a lock. Um, and it's really, 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 really long. There's this kind of gash across uh, the Scottish Highlands, basically. And um, at one end of the gash you've got, well, you've got Inverness. The other end of the gash, 
you basically have this big long lock that goes up to Fort William. Um, and in the middle you've got these two locks with Fort Augustus in the middle. And that's where Loch Ness is. Loch Ness is the northern one. Um, with that one. Now you might think, oh yeah, it's a bit of a lick, you know, whatever. It is a long lick. Like, we are basically going to spend this entire Let's Ride episode, right, traveling up the length of Loch Ness. But, um, yeah. I succeeded on my one day and see if I've wondered. I am incredibly happy about that. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm incredibly happy about that. Um, it was very tense at the end. I just the the emotion involved is something else. I don't think I've even properly processed it yet. But like, I'm like, yeah, I did the NC500 in one day. It's really amazing. And people are like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, you know, the. Oh, that's cool. It does not even approach the emotions that were involved uh, in doing it. Uh, we are, once again, um, making far better time than we expected. The road is empty. When we when I came up this road previously um, on the 2021 trip, we got stuck behind trucks and like cars hauling other cars and trailers and stuff. And um, there, it's very hard to pass when you have a group of four people you're trying to keep together. And um, we didn't really mind because we had a much lazier schedule than what I've got planned. But um, it has kind of lured me into a false sense of security with uh, these roads where I'm like, yeah, 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 it'd just be like a normal ride. I don't know, get stuck behind people, there'd be little villages I have to crawl through and all of this stuff. And um, they kind of aren't, the consequently my average speed is way closer to 60 than I expect. This happened in the NC500 as well because of the one it was just empty. <clears throat> Apologies for my voice, by the way. Um, if you're just jumping in now, I recently had a chest infection. My voice is not fully recovered. And then I've just been doing, like... Uh, Saturday I did a really long ride to get up here. Uh, all of it, like, chatting away. And my voice started to go at the end of that ride. And... Um, on Monday I did the NC500 one day, which is extremely physically taxing uh, and also extremely emotionally taxing, to be honest. Um, and... I, uh... I was doing all the let rides for that and it was, um... Yeah. That took a lot out of my voice. And then yesterday I did a bunch of like piece to camera stuff. Um, because I want to do like a proper travelogue video and things. I have a recap video as well, probably. And my voice, my voice is wrecked. Uh, so as I'm chatting along to you, uh, my voice is going to crack here and there. Um, I cannot hit the high notes. To be honest, in some cases, I can't even hit the mid notes. Um, so, yeah, you, you may at some point today be uh, left to simply enjoy the scenery as it uh, whizzes past because I don't know how long my voice is gonna last. <laughs> Also, I have a bit of a cough. This is, again, because of the chest infection I had, like, the other week. Uh. 
Uh, I forget what this place is called. Um, but we're not done with Loch Ness. Away we go. It may appear that we've left Loch Ness behind and gone off into the countryside, but Loch Ness is just there. Um, and it's just the village is a little bit off from the lake, you know, it's up the little river where the bridge is. And the road comes around here to gain some height so we can get along Loch Ness later. Look at that! Wow, it's probably like utterly blown out, but it's amazing. get a good look at it with my eyes, I can just like get a glimpse of it. Um, it did look pretty cool though. And this is one of the things about coming up here, you think, oh yeah, you know, it's 500, 500 miles one day, whatever. Um, but if you want to come up here and do this properly, you need to take days, because there is so much to stop for. There is so much to stop for. I am just here for a challenge, been and gone. Um, but if you come up here, I recommend that you take days. Not just to do the NC500 itself, do the NC500 five or six days, take a rest day either side in Inverness, um, and spend a couple of days like getting up and getting down, and stop a few places along the way. <coughs> Uh, I I really do recommend doing it that way. Um, you will enjoy it far more than doing it this way. Because the thing is, these roads are still here, between everything. You can still like have fun, like blasting along them. Um, and then you can be like, oh, our car castle. We'll stop there and check it out. Yeah, so, it would be really easy to get negative about the fact that it took me 22 hours. Um, and I don't think that's the right takeaway from my NC500 trip. Um, I'm going to have to collect these thoughts together and put them into a, um, a proper epilogue, but... The bike performed amazingly. Like, the bike performed so good. Every time I was on the road, I was making up time. Even when I got to Akneshi, right? When I stopped at that charger, if it had been working, I would have got back to Inverness at like, 12.45, 1 o'clock? That's basically an hour, an hour and a quarter behind time. <clears throat> I just, like... Would it be 12.45, 1 o'clock? No. No, if when I got up to that machine, if I had been... It would have been 1.30. So like an hour 45 behind time. An hour 45 behind time, after like that crawl over Applecross, that's astounding! Right, if 
the charger at Torridon Hotel in an at, right? And the one that caused me to have to do that crawl. If that had been working, I would potentially have gotten to Inverness at 12.30. At 12.45 maybe. One hour behind. And after everything that happened, to be able to say that, you know, if, if everything had actually worked, if all those chargers had actually worked, I wouldn't have been like getting into Inverness at almost midnight. I would have been getting back at like nine o'clock. I would have posted an absolutely stunning time. And I'm just, I'm floored by that. I'm floored by the fact that <clears throat> At every point, I looked at how much things were slipping and everything wasn't working and it was like, no, I can continue because I'm not that far behind because I'd lose all this time and then I'd just make it up. And... And that's amazing. Like... Like, the takeaway is, the bike is great. The bike absolutely could do everything I threw at the bike on that trip. It just handled, it did it with grace. And then at the end, at the end it performed just above and beyond the Call of Duty. Um, and what killed it on that trip was just, the charging infrastructure was so bad. Like, Charge Play Scotland were just like, yeah, we put a charger in, tick, done. And the chargers are all old, and they're not maintained properly, and they've probably been given a million software, software updates that make them slow, they fail the communication with the vehicle, it just roll a dice of whether you're going to get a charge or not. Uh, like, I didn't get a charge. The next person might get a charge. Um, who knows? But yeah, it's just the the charging infrastructure was all bad. Um, <clears throat> the final breakdown is I visited um, ten places for DC charging. At five of those. Right. Fully half the places I visited, I couldn't get a proper charge. I'm including the one kilowatts at Jodogrotz and like the two percent that failure at Durness in that because that's like neither of those are up to standard at all. Like you may as well not get a charge at that. At that. Uh, and I'm putting Durness even though I got an AC charge because I needed the DC charge. Right. So that's five failures <coughs> at one location in Thurzo. I started the charge properly. It stopped halfway and had to be restarted. That was extremely annoying and what happened to me is exactly what would happen to anyone else. You start a charging, you walk away to do something during like the 30 minutes you're going to be charging. And then when you come back, you're like, oh, it's on 40%. Come on. Because um, I looked at it, it was stopped. I was like, oh, okay. It, it, it automatically stops at 80%. And then I turned the bike on. I was like, oh. Um, so we have five failures one problem and then four of them just worked one of those four um, had two units in separate locations at the time and I'm just including them as like one um, and I had to wait at that one for, well I went to one of the units and it was clear that I would have to wait um, so I could 
like AC charge while I took care of my physical needs and went around to the other charger and it was fine. So I'm counting that one as no problems. Um, so five failures, one problem, and four perfectly good charges. That's abysmal. Especially so when, like, you're in the middle of nowhere, right? There's not very many alternative options except to continue on your journey and potentially run out of power or backtrack um, <clears throat> and potentially run out of power. And. Especially when, like, two of the failures were the last two chargers in the road. I don't mean the last two options. I mean literally the last two chargers. After Akashin, there's nothing. Between Anat and Akashin, there's nothing. You do have the option to bug out. Um, at Anat. Shorter route. You can basically go back a little bit to where the main road was, and then turn right, and it'll take you up to Akashin. And it's quite a short route, but um, I wasn't doing that. And you're ruining your holiday then, because you're cutting out Applecross Pass, which is one of the highlights of the NC500. It's a new day, I'm just coming into this little town and I'm gonna say my piece, which is that this is someone's community. Uh, this is their little village where they live, where they go to work, where they go to the shop, where they walk their dog, where they sit in the village green reading a book. Um, and we have no right to blast through at high speed or rev our engines making loads of noise. Look at that beautiful river, wow. Wherever engines making loads of noise. Um, they posted a 40 limit and we should stick to it. If they post a 30, we should stick to it. If they post a 20, we should stick to it. Um, they deserve to enjoy the community that they live in and we are guests. We should behave appropriately. Out here in the open road, I don't care. You can do whatever speed you want. But when you're in someone's little community, you know, you behave appropriately. May have some roadworks here. Just slow it down for safety. Oh yeah. Um, it is a Wednesday, so there might be guys working. We're not going to push it. Uh, oh, look at that beautiful view. I'm sorry if the sunlight is making it hard. But, um... Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and we are back. Uh, we're going to go reasonably slow through here. Um... It is a Wednesday, there may be guys working. Oh, it's quite early in the morning. It's still like 6.37. No, we're not going to hot dog too much because we don't know if there's going to be another one up here. No, there's the sign to the other side. They haven't bothered to put up like a back to national speed limit sign for us. Yeah, uh, I'm absolutely stunned by the bike's performance. The bike got me back to Inverness when I thought all hope was lost. Uh, my 
that takeaway from NC500 is... Wow, this bike is amazing. I have so many emotions. Um, the charging infrastructure up there is no good. If you got up there with an electric bike, something like this, or maybe a Zero. Zero would do better, I think, um, because the AC charging seems to be working. Although, that's another thing that I had a problem with at Akashin is the AC charger was on that could get an AC charge. I would have sat at Akashin for an hour and got whatever I could in that time. And maybe like 10% or so. And then done a less slow crawl to Inverness and been assured that I would get there. Um, but, yeah, I think a zero would do better, uh, just because AC charging was more available. Um, if I brought my Type 2 Medicaid, I could have charged at Lockharn. But that's a pain in the ass to carry around, and my personal opinion is that uh, anyone who says that I should bring that as a contingency can hack off, and anyone who says I should bring that to rely on it can hack off, because it's, I'm a motorbike, why am I carrying a big bulky cable around to um, fit into something that is standardized? advice and take several days to do it and just don't rely on any of the chargers just be like we're staying at a campsite uh, or a hotel and I'm bringing a granny cable or maybe a type 2 cable with my luggage because I mean I didn't have luggage you gotta remember this is the thing, if I brought like my bike type 2 cable, I would have needed to bring luggage. Um, I have luggage now, because, you know, this is a multi-day trip and stuff. But um, I left my luggage in Inverness, I just had my tank bag. I would have had to bring my luggage, which I didn't want to do. taking a multi-day trip around the NC500, you will have your luggage with you. Don't wild camp, book in at uh, campsites, uh, granny charge at the campsite, uh, book into hotels that have uh, destination chargers, use your Type 2 cable, do something like that. Um, overnight charge and rely exclusively on overnight charging. Until Charge Place Scotland sorts out the charger situation, I can't, re I can't recommend like trying to do it um, without overnight charging. I can't rely re recommend relying on anything else. So this is Fort Augustus. Um, this is sort of halfway through the gash. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for it. I'm just calling it the gash, but like, yeah, there must be a name. Um, the river between the lakes, and you got like the canal between the lakes. Um, yeah, if you have comments, uh, hit me up with a comment below. 
comment below. Hit me up in the comment section below. Wow. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Uh, watch some of my other videos if you enjoy them. You know, subscribe, hit the bell, there's a charger. Um, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you would like to reward me for entertaining you today, you can find the relevant links in the description below. Bye-bye.